Hello, I'm Jeff Lopez, and welcome to today's live stream. Today's live stream is being presented by CavArts.org, Jersey Shore Jazz Workshop, and JazzWire.net. We're presenting this uh, uh, for the folks at CavArts.org, and we'd like to welcome them and thank all of you for coming to watch uh, watch our watch us play some music and talk about jazz. The two things we love to do the best. So. Um, before we start going, I'd like to introduce uh, my partners uh, here on the stage. Uh, to my right, I have uh, Jeff Antoniak. He's a brilliant musician, composer, performer, and educator. And you're really going to enjoy watching and listening to what Jeff has to play and to say today. And on my left is, uh, and your right, is brilliant drummer Frank Russo. I've known him for 25, almost 30 years now. And he's just a, a wonderful musician, a brilliant master of drums, and you're going to truly enjoy his playing and what he has to say about jazz as well. So um, I think um, we might have some questions coming in. You should uh, check out the screen. Our, our folks here at Blue House are going to provide you links to, uh, to send questions if you have some. If you just want to listen and, and hang out with us, that's great too because we're going to play some more music if there are any, any questions. And um, we might uh, also just start randomly talking about some jazz subjects just so uh, the folks at uh, Cap Arts can hear what we're talking about and check out what we're playing. Um, so let's play some more, all right? Oh, and Jeff. Uh, Jeff Gruber is our, our uh, director here at, uh, at Blue House Productions, and he'll be, he'll be shouting out some of the questions to us as as they arise, okay. So uh, don't be shy. Just uh, just send them on out there, and um, I think we'll play. Uh, let's. See. You want to play your tune, Jeff? Sure. Springfield. Sure. We're gonna play an original composition by Jeff Antonio, and it's called Springfield.
Yes, that was Jeff's uh, original composition called Springfield. Jeff, what was the inspiration for that song? Uh, two things. Uh, it started with a groove, and I wanted to write a hit song. I'd never written a hit song, and I thought, that might be cool, I could use the money. <laughs> and so I wrote a song that ended up being pretty good, I thought. But yeah, uh, then I thought, how am I going to put this over the top to become a hit song? So I thought, the title. And I thought about Springfield. A lot of states have a Springfield in it. So if like 10 people from every Springfield bought the album, I didn't think about that. see, that's, that's how I did it. So that's it. But it did start with that groove, right? That kind of cool Americana, you know, kind of yes, groove, which is, that. Yeah. right. So, so to me, that's where it started. I knew that's what I wanted. I used a blues form and then just tried to come up with something that kind of reminded me of like Yakety Sax or Boots Randolph yeah. or, you know, like that was kind of the inspiration. So, you know, getting some country in there, basically. Yeah, that's, that's the sound. It, it yeah. I, I think when we first started rehearsing this, Jeff brought the tune to the first rehearsal and immediately it reminded me of, of like Charlie Hayden and, and Pat Metheny, you know, right. some, some of those uh, Americana type of songs that they, they worked on together. Yeah. So it's a beautiful composition. Thanks for sharing cool. with us. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So um, what do you think? I hear Rhapsody. I've got a question. Oh, let's, let's hear it. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, well, that's an interesting question. I've known Frank, I think I met Frank back in 96, maybe, ish, give or take, in Maryland. And I met Jeff around the same time, ab about 96, 90, 97, somewhere around that. We started working together. Uh, I worked with Jeff as a civilian musician on the side, outside of my military service. And I've worked with, with Frank as a civilian musician as well as a military musician. We, uh, we borrowed, the Army borrowed uh, Frank when he was retired. We needed him for a tour one time, so we, we had him join us in the, in the Army Jazz Ambassador, which was the band I used to serve in uh, a few years ago. So, um, yeah, so how we got together. Well, I, I found out that the folks at Cav Arts, uh, Maggie Tolan, asked me to, uh, to put together a workshop. And um, Jeff is one of the best jazz educators I've ever met. And I think he's brilliant and he does a great job with his, uh, his jazzwire.net organization, put bringing the adult musicians together to, uh, to play and, and learn and, and get better and enjoy the sense of community. So if you don't know Jeff, you gotta check him out. And once you check him out, You'll know the reason why I asked him. It's clear cut. He's the best. And Frank, well, yeah, Frank, it, Frank and I've played together in a big band. We've played together in small groups. I think we've taken lessons together, like a double lesson. We yeah. took double lessons together. We're we're kind of uh, joined at the hip in a manner of a musical manner. Uh, we have a lot of the same musical experiences. So we we have a, a, a simpatico, as they say. We we're, we're very uh, sympathetic to each other's playing which is, I think, key to what we're doing here today. What we're having today is a musical conversation between Jeff, Jeff, and Frank, who really wants to be called Jeff, but he'll be called Frank too. <laughs> so yeah, what we're doing is we're, we're just using our musical skills and ex uh, life experiences in music to engage in a musical conversation. That's what's happening on stage right now. And we, we kind of use um, original music or traditional American standards to engage in those conversations. So we're gonna do a, another standard. It's, um, it's called I Hear Rhapsody. It's uh, in public domain. Oh. Part of that question? oh, yeah, yeah. So Frank's gonna answer the, uh, Tina's question. And thank you, Tina, for asking that question. Yeah, uh, uh, part of that question was, how do you know that, that you're a good fit? And, and I think sometimes that happens instantly, and I think sometimes that, that develops and uh, with, with these uh, two, we, we've um, it, it's been a developed thing, so it's over a long period of time. But also sometimes that you can know that instantly. But I, I think uh, you know to look uh, at people that have same influences as you do, and it should be fun to play <laughs> together. Yeah, and and and, and and I and I when I think of Jeff, <laughs> wh whether we're playing music or whatever we're doing, going to. Taco Bell or whatever it White is. That, that's right, White Castles. White Castles. <laughs> we're, we're both New Yorkers, and uh, and 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 it, we just we just have fun together. And so I think that that 
that um, you know you bring that to who you're playing with, and it, it you know, uh, sometimes that doesn't happen instantly with, with people. It, it's, uh, but I, you know, and sometimes it does. But and so I would say, uh, you know, play with as many people as you can. It doesn't have to be uh, the super group or exactly the instrumentation that you want it to be. Just find some people that that you enjoy. Uh, with socially and and that want to play music and have fun together. All right, let's let's play some more and then we'll um we'll get the greatest hits of the questions and we'll we'll try and uh, get the ones that cover the most uh, the most musical areas. Thank you, Jeff. We're gonna do raps. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So I hear her up, so you raise your hand. Hey, Jeff, any more questions? Yes. All right, why don't you fire away? Yes, we, we always think it's a great idea to have more jazz players play music for all types of situations, and church is no different. Uh, many, many churches in um, the tri-state area in New York City do a jazz vespers. So there's uh, some evening masses in Manhattan you can go to and, and hear brilliant jazz musicians play. Um, I think uh, John Patitucci even does a jazz vespers service up, up in... Uh, White Plains area. So yes, yes, big yes for that. Um, how to do it? I I could give you some su some suggestions, but I I suggest you uh, message us and we can direct you towards uh, some some resources if you're looking for for different types of music. So um, yes, thank you so much for that question. How about another one, Jeff? Who wants to go first on this one? Oh, I got this. That's Jeff, Jeff Antoniak. So I started on classical piano, did that for years. And then when it came time to join band, I thought this is my opportunity to play something cool, not this classical piano stuff. So I you know, went to the band room and decided it's going to be drums for sure. Came home, announced this to my parents, and they said, actually not. No, not drums. So they kind of steered me towards the saxophone because uh, at that time, I'm from Canada, the best high school jazz band in the country was in the city, Edmonton, that I was from. My older cousin <coughs> went to school, and her boyfriend was the star saxophone player. So we'd go to these concerts. So my parents artfully manipulated me into, uh, into playing the saxophone, uh, as opposed to being an attorney, which they actually really wanted, but it was, it's, we stuck with saxophone. So yeah, so that was it. It was... Um, you know, uh, just sort of what being excited about something. Sometimes it's the sh when you're a kid, it's the shape of the instrument. It's crawling under a piano and hearing that sound. You know, it's all kinds of crazy things, right? How about you guys? Well, I'll, I'll Frank, why don't you go ahead? Um, yeah, I, uh, I had a house f full of musicians in, in my family, and so I, I determined I was the youngest, and I, I did not want that to be my thing because everybody else did that. So I. I got into sports, but again, they made me take piano lessons, and uh, and I I had didn't want anything to do with it. It was just time away from uh, doing sports because everybody else was doing music. And then I finally gave in. Uh, uh, I think I was maybe uh, 14 years old when um, uh, my uncle Steve, who graduated from Berkeley School of Music, a great musician. Um, they needed a drum set maybe left at the house and wanted to know if I would take uh, any interest in drums. And I immediately said no, because I had no interest in music. And then the little light bulb came on. I thought, well, if that stops the piano lessons, I'll take the drums. So <laughs> You I were lucky, man. I <laughs> wanted the drums. I, I really didn't want the drums. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but I took it because it stopped the piano lessons. And then I, 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 I want to add this. I, I did get into, uh, in New York in the 70s, there was a lot of live music. But I want to say the, the real first time I saw live jazz was at the Village Vanguard, and it was around 1975. And it was uh, Joe Farrell, uh, rest his soul, and a great saxophone player after Moon Germs came out, in one of his records. And in the band was Eddie Gomez and Steve Gadd, and I forgot if there was anybody else in the band. Sorry about that, but just seeing that in that intimate uh, uh, sitting, um, in that intimate space, that holy space, really, the Village Vanguard was life-changing. Uh, and so, yeah, seeing, seeing jazz live, seeing any music live is different than watching it on a computer or something, but, but really seeing jazz live, uh, sometimes what doesn't translate on records is the emotion and the interplay and the nuances. And uh, when I saw that, I, I was just so driven and attracted to it. And uh, yeah, that was uh, really a turning point. Yeah. Uh, when I got into music, um, I was 15 when I started playing bass. And um, my family uh, had musicians in it. Uh, my cousins 
played uh, in salsa bands. They used to. Um, his name was David Nieves, and he he would play with uh, Mongo Santa Maria and Celia Cruz. But I was much younger than him. He was he was born in the twenties, and I was born much later, let's say. And um, but there was always music in my family. My father wasn't a musician, but loved classical music. And my brother played rock and roll bass, and his bass was the one that I first started playing on. He used to have he used to have a Rickenbacker. Nice. Remember remember the old Rickenbackers like Rick, uh, Chris Squire used to play. Well, he had one of them, and um, whenever he was out working to pay for his bass, I guess um, I would sneak his bass out and play it. And um, it was like months and months before he found out, because I told him I did tell him because I want him to teach me some stuff on bass. I said, John. Teach me some stuff. He goes, what, what, what are you going to play on? What, what, what instrument are you going to use? What? Well, I was playing yours when you're not around. But I'll get my own, I promise. <laughs> so that's how I started. And, you know, did high school band like, like uh, a lot of my uh, friends on the neighborhood, in the neighborhood, rather. So, yeah, I played in stage band in high school once. Like, you know how the joke goes. You get a bass, and then, like, the next day you get a gig. <laughs> It was kind of like that for me with stage band. I joined right away after starting, like just a few months of playing bass. But um, the teacher was great, and he was so kind to me and, and let me, you know, join the stage band. And that, that's kind of where I started playing jazz, if you will, um, just playing in high school band in the stage band, and and even in the concert band. We would play bossa novas in the concert band. So, uh, and from there, it just it was a, a one way destiny for me to be a musician. I uh, look back on it now and there was no other way. I thought I was going to be something else, but it was just music all the way since since 15. So uh, that's how I started, yeah. So um, any more questions, Jeff, that, that are up there? Uh, first of all, we'd like to know if you want to get in contact with these two guys. Uh, yeah, there's two ways I think we can do this. I think people can leave comments or you can visit Jeff at his website at jazzwire.net or you can miss, uh, visit my website at uh, jerseyshorejazzworkshop.com and any questions towards Frank we could direct toward to him I, Facebook. yeah Frank's on Facebook Frank Russo drums so you'll, yeah, you'll and, find and him to in. keep it simple if you write me at jeff at jazzwire.net email address, and I could pass the message on to any Perfect. of these guys. Perfect. There yep. we go. So there's many ways to find us. You just have to remember our names, really. That's about it. <laughs> so the next piece, you want to play... Um our drummer. All those piano lessons clearly paid off. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to take piano lessons, but look. Look what he learned how to do by taking piano lessons. Knows how to write music, so piano's not all that bad. So it's one of Frank's songs. It's called Oh Ya, Oh No, and I think I'll let Frank explain the significance of the title. Uh, um, it, it's a Minnesota saying for sure, and, and uh, my wife's from Minnesota, so I, I hear this saying a lot. They just don't say yes or no. It's uh, a lot of times it's Oh Ya, Oh No. It's, it's both. <laughs> So yes or no? That's Just like Wayne yes. Shorter? That's right. Oh, okay. Exactly. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.
Piano by Frank Russo. Oh yeah, oh no. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, what do you think we do, Lady Goodman? Sure. Yeah. Hey Jeff, we have any, uh, any more questions in, uh, on deck? Oh, that's that's yeah. That's uh, very astute. That's yeah. That's that's the vibe. So we're gonna play some more music. Uh, we we got uh, "Lady Be Good" up next, and uh, made famous by uh, Lester Young and so many other people. So "Lady Be Good."
on behalf of Jeff Antoniak, Frank Russo, and myself, Jeff Lopez, and the Jersey Shore Jazz Workshop, jazzwire.net, and cavarts.org, we'd like to welcome everyone who watched and everyone who participated in the question and answer. So once again, visit us at all the uh, places we said before, and we'd love to connect with you. And thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye.